basketball has been uh, my joy of my life. It's a, it's a passion, uh, it's a love that uh, as a young man I, uh, I, I really enjoyed. It, the biggest thing was that it gave me a satisfaction of accomplishment. It's something that uh, we've, I've done from day one, from the middle school to high school to college, and now I'm becoming a coach. So it's always something that I want to always feel like I had to give something back to. That's one of the first things in coaching, be yourself. I was taught to be myself. They'll figure out if you're phony or, or you're trying to be somebody else. Some coaches were more disciplined. Some were had that even kill, that balance of discipline. It wasn't punishment or anything, but we always say, well, I want to make you better because we both go in at this, this game. When, when the coach want more out of you, you reach down and get more. So that's the only thing I ever learned, I've ever taught, and that's what, as a coach today, I try to instill in the young men today, uh, you know, how hard it is. If you want to compete, not only against the, the person in your, on your team, you're competing against everybody in college. From my first season, I, I, I was going in wet behind the ears, as you say. I didn't know too much. I was averaging 25 points a game in high school, thinking I know everything. And then come there, and I had a reality check. I was playing behind a senior. So I had to learn quick that, you know, I mean, it's, it's not always going to be given to you. And then hard work, dedication every summer, and just getting yourself prepared, being in shape is really key. And, getting stronger because the game was faster. So Coach Simmons, Coach Dumars, and they just always instilled in me hard work and dedication. Just work as hard as you can and just keep on getting better. And at your weaknesses, you have to try to improve those also. So I mean, it helped me in the long run and now I'm still playing. I really enjoyed the full experience from school to academically to athletically. And I still have bonds with a lot of the guys and coaches. I've probably known Dave Simmons for, I know over 30 years. You know, Dave's, his strengths for, as a coach came as a player. That when you think of Dave Simmons, you think of uh, hard work. He puts in a lot of work. He he has respect for people that work, and uh, uh, he's always been a hard worker. And he's a communicator. How do you get that player to the next level? And uh, I, I think that's where you, as a coach, you have to give them a plan. You know, everybody has a plan, but coach, wh how can I get there? And you got to be a good coach to give them that plan. How can I, how can you improve? How can I make our team better? The off season is the most key part of getting better, I think, because I mean, you go through a whole season. I mean, you 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 can work out during the season, but you have games, two three games a week. So in the off season, you basically you may be in summer school taking classes. Other than that, you have a lot of free time. So I think that's the time to work on your weaknesses, like Coach Simmons said, and also improve your strengths, too. I mean, you could always get better at everything you're good at, but also get better at things you're not good at. Everybody's a superstar from where they come from. Everybody was the, the main guy. And when you get to college, I mean, there's a lot of good basketball players. And the ones that can understand what their role, uh, identify what his coach want early, how can I get minutes? So whether it's a hustle, whether it's the big guy, I can, I'm the best free throw shooter on the team. I've always said that, guys, be good at something and, and let your coaches uh, understand what you're good at, and they'll find a way to use you. As a freshman, I was 185 pounds, soaking wet. I graduated at 220. I was uh, one of the leading shot blockers in the conference when I finished which helped my team win some games, I guess. I mean, I knew my role as a senior. I could always talk to the young guys like, hey man, just always be ready. You know, coach will, all of a sudden, might just call your name, you don't even know. So always be ready, always be prepared. My senior year, we were in the conference tournament, we were playing UTSA in the first round. And um, Kevin Hardy, he hadn't really, I mean, he played throughout the season, but he was a freshman, he didn't play too much. And I kept telling him, man, just be ready, you never know. And that season, we had so many injuries. We had like six, seven guys suited out at times. So that game, coach called on his number, and we ended up going in overtime. He basically almost won the game for us, pretty much getting a steal, a dunk, and you see, just that example right there, let alone, and many more, you never know when your number's gonna be called. I think anyone who watches a Dame Simmons coached basketball team will watch that team get better over the course of a season. It's an amazing thing. He can, he'll, he'll often play different players at the end of the season that he's played at the beginning. But what happens is he'll use everybody off of that bench at one time or another during the year. And what happens is you see a team that is struggling or a team that isn't quite got its act together. But as that season goes along, they become a team. They learn that teamwork is more than any individual player. 
and he takes raw talent and, and sometimes raw individuals and he brings them up to where by the time they graduate they are changed individuals and I mean changed for the better. Or oh, I understand as, as a parent with kids they're gonna make mistakes so I treat each one of them like they're my own and that's what you have to do on the coaching. Sometimes it's tough love. No one's bigger than the team and that's what they got to understand. Uh, they represent not only themselves but it's a whole lot of people look at you and when you're out there in the public eye. Uh, the thing about uh, Dave is, you know the caring part, you know. he get on you, but those kids know deep down inside that he cares for them. He's always there for them. And it's great, if I was a player, I'd love playing for Dave. I really would. Because uh, I know he got my back. And I know if I make a mistake, you know, I can go to him and talk to him about it. And 90% and of the time, you know, he don't listen and, and he will give you a second chance. When he asks you a question or you ask him a question, he doesn't look through you and just give you a generic answer. And then when he asks a question, he'll listen to your answer. I think Dave's biggest strength is he see good in everybody. Uh, always willing to give him a second chance. And that's just the kind of person, he's about the nicest person I, you know, I ever met. I've always said, judge me 15 years later when I deal with young people. Because if that young man's out there whether he's married, have a family, is he productive in life and society, that's when you judge me, not on what we've done as a record or, uh, or what was, how many championships we won. What have I put that young man in a, in a position where he can go out in life and survive? I think that's when, that's what I mark myself. I remember John Thompson which when he was at uh, Georgetown in their glory days and they talk about education. He had a basketball in his office and he was telling one of his players and they, they asked him, why is the basketball flat? He just taking one of his basketballs, championship ball and let the air out of it. He was telling his player that one day, son, that ball is going to go flat for you. What are you going to do? And I think he was trying to get the young man to understand why was the education so important. Use that basketball to means. It's an education. Use it as much as you can to your ability. If you ask him right now what his greatest feats have been in coaching, uh, it wouldn't be that he's been to two conference finals and he's been to an NIT. He'd give you his graduation rate. And that means a lot to him. We've always talked about education or getting to be that, getting that degree, no matter what your degree in uh, when you come to college. And I think that's the biggest thing uh, as a coach when you go in a home. And uh, I've always stressed this. I said, I can't promise you how much playing time you'll get, but that's determined by you. Here at Magny State, uh, we have an academic center that really ties into uh, the, the student athlete. And I think sometimes small is great. And I think uh, a lot of times you get too big, uh, you, you, you miss that, that teacher, uh, student, especially a student athlete relationship. And I think here at Magnesia, our students does such a great job with their teachers. And the teachers by four, and I, I think our administration does a great job of or getting uh, our students to understand what's the value of education. When you have a city of 80,000 people, we still have everything that you could possibly need and that a big city has. But at the same time, we've got that small town atmosphere. The university, 8,000 students, but we still offer everything that I think all the people in southwest Louisiana expect and want. Our faculty gets to know you on a first name basis. Our administrators come to all of our athletic events and know our athletes on a first name basis. I think one of the things that's been very special is how happy our kids are. Uh, and our athletes are happy because not only are we successful, we've got great tradition here and the fact that we got good coaches that are good people. Um, but we also have a tradition here at McNeese of winning athletics winning not just on the field but in the classroom and I think our student athletes show the rest of the university how a university ought to be. McNeese is the only university in Louisiana recognized for reaching the standard by the NCAA for our APR, academic progress rate, and have all our teams recognized for meeting that standard that no other university in the state of Louisiana can be recognized for. You live by example. And I think one of the best things my coaches put in me to instill this old is a format. And when it says it's a, it, it works. And I haven't changed it since I started. And we've always tried to express them. Have a relationship with God. Put your 
religious beliefs, wherever, whatever they may, may mean or whatever religious background you have, put that first. Then, then we always try to, number two, we always put family because that's so important. Where you come from is your background. Don't ever forget about your family. And then in, in our business, we talk about education because as a coach, if you know you got a young man in those three priority lines, God, family, education, we always want them to give back. And I think that's the one thing we do here at Magnet State in our community. We get involved. We get, try to get involved with every aspect. No matter what walk of life, from uh, children's home, children's clinics, uh, to the women's shelter. So we, we're involved in everything that we can do. Coach Simmons, he's big on academics. He wants you to be a fine young man first, followed by academics, and then go to your family, and then basketball. He knows basketball won't be here forever, but your family will. And you got to worry about yourself growing up and being successful. Just the other day in Houston, when we was checking out, the young lady at the front, front desk said, we had the nicest team that ever she'd been around. Uh, everywhere we go, I mean, everywhere we go. In the airport, people stop and say, man, you got some great kids. He wants our players to be visible, and he thinks it's good for them. They need to know that they walk into a principal's office and they're going to go to a library or they're going to go read a book, a Dr. Seuss book, in, in front of some young people. Uh, we meet together, and, and he talks to them about dress, and manners. It's like kind of being a father with your with your grandkids. You know, you, you take them around and show them off sometime. You know, and so he likes to take his players around and let people meet them. You know, one of the best projects I think we've ever done since I've been a basketball coach, by far exceeds any one a lot uh, win that we have a championship. We got involved with a. Uh, a program called Team Impact. You're put together with a young, a young person in your community um, that uh, had a, a life-altering change. And it's a national organization that puts a, a person or a family in contact with a local college. And, uh, and what it is, it, they, they join your team basically. And we got involved in a young man and probably has done more things for me as a coach, as a person, and as a father, and as a coach, it impacted our team and, and changed some guys, some players, and it really how important life is, how important uh, things that we take for granted. And uh, the program, uh, uh, develop. If we had one day, we signed a player. He was eight years old, and uh, and when he met the team, and to see his his enthusiasm, and he was very shy. We went to school one day, had lunch with him, and his teachers were saying, "What is going on? He never speaks in, in school." He showed us around the school. He said, "These are these these are my guys." I mean, and uh, our guys uh, as players, I mean, they just love him to death. And, but the most touching s story was right before the game, and uh, we talk about what our plan is to go out and try to win the game. A young man asked me, he said, uh, can I, Coach, can I say something? And I said, boy, no. I said, yes. He said, guys, you're my brothers, and I love you. Go out and win. And you can see heads drop, tears roll. That touched everybody on our team. We have a new innovation minor that says a lot about who we are. Any student can major in whatever they want. They can minor in innovation. And that innovation minor makes them a special type of graduate. It means they can go out into the world not just as an English major, but as an innovative English major or a chemistry major who is innovative. Um, here in this region, there's so much synergy happening with uh, industry. I think McNeese is positioned to be in the right place at the right time as we head into the next decade. The students 10 years from now, a substantial percentage of them will be in jobs that don't exist today. 
how can we prepare them for those jobs? One way is through preparing them for innovation itself. We're one of two universities in the nation with that curriculum, but we believe that combination of uh, innovation curriculum with a seed center that's here at McNeese, the uh, Innovation and Entrepreneurship Center, where new businesses are being incubated, where the Chamber of Commerce is here on campus, and I believe we may be the only university in the nation with a regional Chamber of Commerce located on a com college campus. Students have unique opportunities here for innovation and entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneurship at McNeese than they would have anywhere, I believe, in the country. And the fact that we have a $60 billion worth of industry coming to Southwest Louisiana will make that even more special. First, I think we have one of the best uh, support system uh, anywhere I've been. Uh, we have a study hall here. Uh, we make sure they go to class. And when they don't, you know, it's a, it's a punishment for it, you know. And that's what they're here for. First, you have to get the education. And plus, to keep your APR up, you have to go to class. And so you're teaching them, take care of your responsibilities first to prepare them for uh, when they get out into life. Well, you know, one thing when recruiting, you try to tell people, I mean, you want your program to be just as elite as any program in the country. And you try to tell uh, young pen people and their families that what it means to be a Magnet State Cowboy. What it means. I mean, in life, what are you going to get out of it? You know, uh, in today's society, uh, young kids want to know what I'm getting out of it. And then you paint a picture. Uh, what a scholarship's worth. Now, when you t you talk about, uh, I'm giving you fifty, sixty thousand dollars today, but you got to earn it, and it's not easy. I, old cliche: It's not easy being a cowboy, because there's there are certain demands that are going to put on you, certain expectations is going to be on you, and the expectations are high. Can you meet those expectations? Are you willing to do what it takes to get it? Because I can guarantee at the end of those expectations, you meet them, there's a pot of glory, passion, love. And when you open that envelope, it's going to be like the most glorious day you ever had in your life. So what it means to be a cowboy, it means to be great. It means to have great character. It means to sacrifice, have a great work ethic, and you're willing to give. Academically, we're going to give you the best resources you can ever have to be successful in the classroom. Socially, we're going to put you in connection with every aspect that we can. We're going to make sure that experience one experience you'll never forget. We're going to put you on winning teams. And with that, we're going to give you that winning attitude where it will, and within this organization, help you in any venture that you do in life. So we're going to give you the whole process, the tools to work with, that you can carry on life and be proud that you've been a part of the Magnet State Men's Basketball Program. <laughs>